This video will introduce you to the push function of the stack data structure, giving you an idea of how it works and how, can it, how it can be applied and I'll also show you the code for this function. And I'll be using some animation to help visualize and better understand this concept. In this video, I'll introduce you to the array implementation of the stack data structure. I'll go through how the push function can be used to add or push add items into the stack. I'll be using an example with some animation to show you how the push function will add items. And after that, we'll look at the code for this function. And we'll run it in our project files as we continue to build our stack project. I'm also about to upload the next video about the pop and peak functions for the stack data structure. So I strongly suggest that you click the bell icon next to the subscribe button so you don't miss this video or any data structures videos or any programming videos I will upload. And click the subscribe button if you haven't already. And welcome to Eco Fundamentals. Now the goal of this video is to create a function that will push items or elements into the stack. So say we have an example stack called my stack and we already have items or elements A and B and we want to add more items. So we'll call the, the push function that will add an item C and we can call it again to add another item D. So let's create this function. Since this is an array implementation of the stack, I think it would be best if we have a quick revision of the arrays. Now to create an array, you would first need to define the type of elements you want to store. And in this case, we are storing integer elements in an array. We will call it A. And we declare the size of the array in the brackets. And we want to store and we want an array that can store five elements or items. Or we can declare and initialize our array like an integer array that can store five items and has the elements 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And an array with those elements will be created. For arrays, we can also access specific items, items or elements in the array using an index. So from, an, from the array we created, let's access or index the value at an index or position tree. Now keep in mind that in C++, the index values for an array start at 0 and not at 1. So in this case, the, the item or value at an index tree is the number 8. So, and there is also another thing I would like to cover in this revision of arrays. Say we have an array that can store 5 elements and we haven't initialized the array. One way to add elements is we can write the array and inside the index we want to add an element to and set it equal to the element we want to add. So in the array A at index 0, we want to add the number 2. And at an index 1, we want to add the, num the element 4. And at index 2, we want to add the element 6. And we will do the same when we add the elements 8 at index 3 and 10 at index 4. And that's it for the revision. Now, something to keep in mind before we create the push function is that the only direction in which we can add elements into the stack is at the top of the stack. So we'll have an array with elements 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. We will consider that as our stack. And you will see the difference when I upload the linked list implementation of the stack data structure very soon. Let's look at the push function that will add elements into the stack. For this example, we will have an example array that can store five elements. And we will use C++ for this function. And in a moment, I will show you the complete code in the project files as we will add this function in the stack project files and run the code with some examples. So we have an empty stack and the top is equal to negative one. And when we push the element two into the stack, the function will first check if top is equal to size minus one or the last index in the stack. And the stack is empty, so we skip 
to the else statement. And inside the else statement, we first increment increment by one, and now it will be equal to zero. And we add the element two at index zero of the stack. When we add the element four into the stack, we increment top by one, and now it is equal to one. And so we add the element four at index one of the stack. We can add six. The stack is still not full, so we increment top and add element six at index two. And since the stack is not full, we can add another element eight at index three. And we have space to add one more element, and we can add the element 10 at index four. And now the stack is full as top is equal to four. So if you try to add another element, then we'll enter the if statement, which will just print out the message, the stack is full. Now let's quickly move on to see how this function works in an actual project. Inside the project files, we will run this program with some examples. So for this project, we'll be using VS Code for our text editor. And you can use any text editor that you're comfortable with. And so we'll create two files, the, the stack.ccp file and the main.ccp file. In the stack.ccp file, this is where we will define the functions. OK. So after including the iStream and the C standard library and also using namespace std, we will define the global variable, the stack size from set 5. And then after that, we will create the stack class. Now, the stack, since this is an array implementation of the stack, we'll be using arrays. So we'll create this, the class stack, and then we'll, in, we'll, create a, in, we'll create a variable called top. After that, we'll create a constructor for the stack class. Now, this should be in the public section of the class. And then we also need an array which will take in the stack size. Now, for, for our constructor of the stack, which will be called every time an instance, an instance of a stack is created, we want to set a top variable equal to negative one. That would mean the stack is empty. Now for the push function, which will add elements to the stack. And this should be a void function. We'll call it push. And it takes in an integer data, which is the element we want to add to the stack. Now, let's actually create this function, which is the push function. This function adds elements to the stack. So, and we need to check if the stack is full or not, and then increment the top variable, and then we can add the element and that's the plan so let's actually create this function so from the class we'll create push which takes an integer data so if so we first need to check if the stack is empty or not and we do that by checking if top is equal to uh, the stack size minus one which are oh yeah, we just need to check if the stack if top is equal to the stack so and if that's the case we need to print out the statement that the stack is full but if this if top is not equal to one then we want to increment top and then 
the new index will set the date and that should work so in our main .tcp file we include iStream and the C standard library we need also need to include the stack .tcp file also using namespace std we'll create our main function and let's just return zero so we need to check if we have any errors so we compile our code and we don't have any errors now that we've covered the push function we can move on to the pop and pick functions for the array implementation of the stack data structure now please take 10 seconds to click the subscribe button and the bell next to it if you haven't already because that helps me to grow this channel and you won't miss any videos i will upload that might help or entertain you in the near future and you can support me by checking out my patreon page i will leave the link in the video description below and thanks for staying with me until now and welcome to eco fundamentals